You are standing on the eastern shore of the Salton Sea in Southern California. Nearby is a mainline railroad where trains roll at 200 feet below sea level. This western portion of the former Southern Pacific Sunset Route is entirely below sea level from Indio to Nyland. Let's check it out. Indio is like an oasis in the Coachella Valley region of Southern California's Colorado Desert. It was called Indian Wells when the Southern Pacific arrived here in 1876. It became an important water stop for steam engines halfway between Yuma and Los Angeles. Since there were many other locations with the name Indian Wells, the town was eventually renamed Indio, which is a Spanish word for Indian. We are standing opposite the old yard office, engine house, and machine shops once located inside a Y track on the north side of the mains. Today it serves as a lumber yard for a customer of the railroad. Looking west, a stack train has stopped to let off a crew member and meets a westbound Z, getting a good run at the mountain grade ahead. UP-8917 continues eastward with a long train of 40-foot marine containers out of Long Beach. The bright colors of Bougainvillea really stand out in this desert town which is 13 feet below sea level. It is not uncommon for summertime temperatures to hover around 120 degrees Fahrenheit with an official record high set in 1905 at 125. Although others have recorded a blistering 135 degrees around the same time period. During our visit in March of 2023, it was a comfortable 80 as helpers sprint through Indio after shoving the stack train over the apex at Beaumont. The crew didn't stop at Indio, but continued another five miles east to the crossovers at Coachella, control point CPSP 615. The next westbound they will assist is still a couple hours away, so the crew sits tight in between switches on main two.
A flared SD-70M number 4868 leads a westbound manifest past the waiting helpers on Main 1. Coachella is named for the Coachella Valley, which extends from San Gorgonio Pass to the Salton Sea. It is bordered by the San Bernardino and Little San Bernardino Mountains on the northeast, and the San Jacinto and Santa Rosa Mountains to the west. Irrigation has turned this arid rift valley into a fertile and productive agricultural area, with over 100,000 acres of rich farmland. A truly wide variety of fruits and vegetables are grown in the Coachella Valley, from lemons, oranges, and grapefruit, to cabbage, carrots, and cotton. And that list barely scratches the surface. The valley is the northernmost part of the Salton Trough, which includes the Salton Sea and Imperial Valley, extending south to the Gulf of California in Mexico. The trough takes the railroad below sea level for over 60 miles from Indio to a point east of Nyland. Mecca has a distinction of having the lowest elevation traversed by a mainline railroad in North America. The actual lowest point of negative 204 feet is said to be just east of our location. Between Thermal and Salton, the Yuma subdivision is a single-track mainline with sightings like this one at Mecca. UP 7514 leads a Z-train eastward through what is known as America's Basement. Groves of citrus and date palms make a patch quilt extending toward the blue waters of the Salton Sea. Here, the railroad parallels Highway 111, better known as Grapefruit Boulevard. A Norfolk Southern engine has found itself on the point of a westbound land barge of marine containers between the sidings of Mortmer and Mecca. In the distance, the barren features of the Oracopia Mountains stand in stark contrast to the valley floor. Between 1969 and 1972, many Apollo astronauts trained there in preparation for landing on the moon, starting with the Apollo 13 crew. Appearing lifeless and empty, the Oracopias do resemble the lunar surface. Lifeless, empty, and void were how those who built the Southern Pacific Line described the landscape. The area was first surveyed in 1857 by Edward Fitzgerald Beale, whose party used camels to cross the desert. We can't help but wonder what those surveyors would have thought 
if they could see the groves of date palms and vineyards the railroad now runs through. UP 8387 takes more double stacks west. A track geometry train catches us by surprise west of Mortimer. Another surprise, or sidetrack, is this work of art found along the road. At 235 feet below sea level, the Salton Sea lies in a basin of what was once part of the Gulf of California, now cut off by a delta plain created by the Colorado River. It is a landlocked body of water currently measuring about 35 miles long and 15 miles wide. When Southern Pacific built through here in 1876, it was just a dry sink in an inhospitable part of the world. Recorded history shows that it had been so for the previous three centuries. Today, the Southern Pacific's original grade is out there, under the salty waves. A series of floods from the Colorado River starting in the spring of 1905 changed all of that. To tap the agricultural potential of the Imperial Valley, over 700 miles of irrigation canals were built from the Colorado River. Farms began to flourish in this new setting akin to the Nile River in Egypt. The main issue was the amount of silt carried by the Colorado, which blocked the canal intake near Yuma, shutting off water to all farms and ranches. A quick fix was a breach in the river south of the border, which allowed the water to flow again. What was overlooked was the tendency of the Colorado and the Gila rivers to flood, and in the spring of 1905, they did so with a vengeance. The entire flow of the Colorado River was diverted into the Salton Basin due to its extremely low elevation. The result can still be seen today. Several attempts were made to stop the water over the next few years, and it was Southern Pacific's Edward Harriman, the famous railroad tycoon who took it upon himself to fix the break in the levee at the cost of millions of dollars to his company. By 1907, he succeeded, saving the Imperial Valley. In 1911, U.S. President William Howard Taft asked Congress to compensate the Southern Pacific for their effort, but the company never received a dime. Shortly before his death, Harriman visited the Imperial Valley and was asked by a reporter if he regretted the large expenditure, having not been reimbursed by the U.S. government. Harriman simply replied, No, this valley was worth saving, wasn't it? Now over 100 years later, the rich Imperial Valley remains, while the Salton Sea has faded like a mirage in the desert, only to return again to what we see today. And efforts are being made to save it. The railroad was eventually realigned around the east side of the Salton Sea between Mecca and Nyland. That is why we can see trains like the UP 5830 East running through Mortmer on a much higher elevation of 200 feet below sea level.
Another piece of railroad history along the Salton Sea is the Eagle Mountain Railroad, which once ran for 52 miles to a Kaiser Steel Mill Company ore mine. The line was constructed between 1947 and 1948, and ore trains ran until 1986, after the closure of the mine. The tracks remained dormant for quite some time, and occasionally they were used for Hollywood movies, such as The Professionals in 1966, and Tough Guys in 1986, featuring SP Daylight number 4449. Today the rails are gone and the ties have recently been pulled up. One remaining structure is this old maintenance of way shed, located just uphill from the former junction with the SP main line at Farron. The shed is made out of ties and rail and appears to have been used for storing high rail equipment. Some of the rail inside the structure shows a manufactured date of 1970, making this a fairly late structure in the railroad's history. The Eagle Mountain Railroad is just a memory, but you can still walk where the trains once ran, and from its grade, watch as steel wheels continue to polish the old SP main line. The line is now double-tracked from here to Mesquite, 60 miles to the east near Glamis. With the San Gorgonio Mountains towering in the background, UP 7490 sprints eastward toward Yuma. As the train approaches Bertram, it crosses Salt Creek on a trestle that still proudly bears a name of the Southern Pacific. A clear shows on Main 1 and a red for Main 2. There is a westbound approaching fast. The signal bridge is for control point CPSB 648, the old siding of Bertram on the south side of the double track main. At the time of our visit in March of 2023, a strong storm system was pounding Southern California with heavy rain and snow in the mountains. Looking northwest, San Gorgonio Pass remains shrouded in thick clouds. Down here along the Salton Sea, precipitation is rare. 
On average, there are 13 days per year of measurable precipitation, bringing an annual total of three inches of rain to the Colorado Desert region. UP 7250 West heads through Bertram on Main 1. A few minutes later, UP 5792 leads a stack train west on Main 2. Since leaving West Colton, the railroad has generally followed a famous geological feature, namely the San Andreas Fault. Depending on which map you look at, the southern portion of the fault ends in this general vicinity along the eastern shore of the Salton Sea. In addition to earthquakes, numerous hot springs can be found along this active geological area, including one big mud pot that is on the move. A green signal at mile marker 663.6 .6 beckons an eastbound through Worcester on the number one track. Watch carefully as the train slowly wiggles through an interesting phenomenon that has disrupted the railroad along with nearby California Highway 111. The giant mud pot was first discovered in 1953 and since then has moved across the Imperial Valley and under the UP tracks here at Worcester, forcing Uncle Pete to move their main line around the pot. We call it the Wister Wiggle, performed today by UP 7353 East.
Trains roll through Worcester at over 200 feet below sea level, but soon will begin climbing out of the sink. The grade will increase to 0.55% and then a full 1% near Nyland, the next station to the east. The snow-capped San Jacinto Mountains still command the scene at Nyland, milepost 667.8 on the Yuma subdivision. This is a junction with the UP Calexico line, which heads to the Mexican border at Calexico, around 41 miles to the south. An old maintenance of way base is located on the north side of the junction, while on the south are what is left of the RV Oasis Park, most of which was destroyed by fire a few years ago. The name Nyland is a play on the words Nile Land, referring to the fertility of the area, although the town itself does not appear so to those passing through. The population is said to be around 500. Looking down the Calexico subdivision, a stack train has just come from the border and will be tied down just south of Nyland Junction. This is looking east toward Yuma. The clear signal on Main 1 is for the UP 6040, which leads a stack train up the 1% climb out of the Salton Sink. Five units are on the point of an eastbound manifest led by UP 6621, an AC-44CW built for UP in 1997. A sixth engine, number 2681, adds a little push through Nyland. You have been watching an excerpt from our brand new video, Union Pacific's Yuma Subdivision, available on DVD, HD Blu-ray, and 4K Digital with Vimeo On Demand. In the full-length two-hour program, you will visit West Colton Yard near San Bernardino, the Colton Flyovers, San Timoteo Canyon, Beaumont Hill, 
and plenty of high-speed desert running to Yuma, Arizona. There is a link in the description below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to see more programs like this added weekly. From all of us at 7 Idea Productions, thanks for watching.